maybe you all can see my screen. So this will only be uh, a small part of our activities. I think maybe in the next meeting, you will get a bit more of the activities from Krishna's group. So the title of this talk is quantification of mitochondria derived vesicles in cardiomyoblasts using structured elimination microscopy and machine learning based uh, segmentation. So this can be uh, simplified to uh, counting tiny vesicles in bioimages. So these uh, tiny blobs you see here in the background, they are mitochondria derived vesicles. And we are interested in understanding them better. So the outline for this talk is uh, First, I'll give you a brief introduction to a resolution limit, a super resolution, the SIM principle, and the speed optimization of this particular imaging technique for the quantification of mitochondria derived vesicles. Then uh, we'll look a tiny bit of the biology and we'll see how we can use this images and machine learning based segmentation to quantify them in image J. And then we will uh, compare how many vesicles are for two different growth conditions of cardiomyoblasts. So the, the resolution is just how closely stuff can be and still be discriminated. If we have some fine structures in the sample, they will be blurred by the microscope and look like larger blobs. And when they are resolved, you can see them as different. And when they are at the resolution limit and beyond, even beyond the resolution limit, you, they will all mix together in the image and you will not be able to tell the underlying structure. And it doesn't matter uh, how many blobs you put underneath there, the blob will look similar. And the size, uh, yeah, and this resolution is very different from magnification. Often hear it confused. So it doesn't matter how many times you magnify this, you will still not be able to tell the underlying structure. Uh, the size of this blob uh, is determined by the numerical aperture of the microscope and the wavelength of light. So this is in a, this is the upper resolution limit. This has the wavelength divided by two times the numerical aperture. And the numerical aperture is uh, uh, the angle in this function is this half cone here of collected light. So this is your sample. The light goes through the cover slip, maybe some immersion media. Uh, and this determines the final angle captured by the, uh, by the objective. There are many different techniques now for going beyond this traditional resolution limit. You might have heard of some of them, like single uh, molecule localization uh, microscopy or STED. The one we are looking at today is uh, SIM, Structured, structured elimination microscopy. Uh, this is a, an example where <clears throat> in the conventional image, you're not able to just look at these tiny holes in liver cells. They are filtrating the blood, but with the SIM image, you are able to resolve the invisible structures. There are many challenges, especially for live cells, super resolution microscopy, especially the imaging speed and phototoxicity. So the imaging techniques which are most suitable for live cell imaging are the ones that can go fast and use lower light dose. Uh, that is why SIM is a popular technique for that because it can go relatively fast, don't use that much light. And you can also do volumetric and multicolor imaging. So let's have a look at the principle behind this technique. So it's based on Moray 
patterns, Amore fringes. And these are these larger patterns that occur when two finer patterns overlap. You can also see that the pattern that emerges depends on the angle and also shift between other with, between the patterns. So even though this very fine pattern is below beyond the resolution limit and you can't see it, you can still be able to image these larger patterns and then uh, acquire many different of these patterns and then use a reconstruction algorithm to determine these smaller uh, structures. So usually in uh, practice, uh, we use uh, sinusoidal stripes as the Ill illumination pattern. And for the microscope I've used, uh, we illuminate at three different angles and five different phase shifts. And it's also a volumetric microscope where we use uh, eight planes per micrometer depth. So we need 15 times eight images just to get one, uh, one color channel for a one micrometer volume. And for the algorithm to work, also, this needs to be a good contrast of these stripes. They need to be bright enough. So we say we need uh, 10 to 1 signal to background uh, um, ratio, approximately, and good modulation contrast. So this is how a conventional fluorescence image might look like. And then if we illuminate it with a stripey pattern, the mitochondria set look like this. And then when we acquire many of these and reconstruct the image, we can get a super result same image. And we can see that the outer mitochondrial membrane is labeled. Something which was invisible in the conventional image. You can also do multicolor imaging, although this has some challenges related to the point spread function. To get this beautiful modulation contrast, we need the point spread function to look approximately like this. And the problem with multiple colors is that it changes for different colors. So, so we want this symmetrical spread. So this is the z-axis and this is uh, x or y. And here for green, we see that it starts spreading a bit more out. And for the, the blue channel here, it spreads even more, but also the signal to noise is really poor. So what happens then if you try to reconstruct something like this is that we only get reconstruction artifacts. And only where the point spread function looks good, we will get uh, an actual super assault image. So let's come back to the biology and try to apply SIMP to, to this system. So as you might be aware, mitochondria are essential organelles and they are especially important in energy demanding tissue like the heart. And for your heart to function properly all your life, it needs uh, many healthy, well-functioning mitochondria. And the accumulated damage of mitochondria in the heart might lead to a heart attack. So what we are, what our collaborators are looking at is how are, how is the mitochondria turnover? How is, are they degraded and reformed? And how do mitochondria communicate within the heart to ensure that they stay healthy? And these uh, MDVs or mitochondrial divided vesicles they are around 100 nanometer small, fast moving, and very uh, difficult to capture by imaging, but important for the heart biology. And it seems that they are uh, important to ensure a healthy pool of mitochondria. And the particular cells we are looking at are a cell line called H9C2. It's a rat cardiomyoblast cell line. So it's from uh, embryonic rat heart tissue. And then it was stably transfected. So 
all the cells are expressing this double fluorescent uh, tag on the outer mitochondria membrane protein AMP25. So the double tag is uh, not so necessary for quantify, uh, just for quantifying the, the vesicles, but um, it is uh, an acid sensor because we are also in related work looking at mitochondria degradation in lysosome. So when when these proteins end up in lysosome, then the, the green fluorescence will be quickly quenched or disappears while uh, the M cherry, the red fluorescence will remain because it is far more acid stable. So the main, my main question before I started doing this work was, can we at all study MDVs using SIM? Because it, even though it's relatively fast, it is not, maybe not as fast as uh, MDVs because you need all these different image planes. Of, uh, so it might take several seconds or even minutes if you're doing multicolor images to acquire like large stacks. But I thought I'll give it a try and see what parameters can I tweak on our commercial microscope to increase the speed. So what I found uh, most significant was to change the, the camera mode. Usually we image in like a medium imaging speed because the, the noise is lower. So that was recommended by the manufacturer, but I changed that too fast and thought, let's see how it works with a higher noise. Maybe I can use an alternative reconstruction algorithm as well. And then I changed the camera read area because it actually takes quite a lot of time to read out all these pixels. So that can take more than 20 milliseconds, maybe 30 milliseconds. So I only use a small portion of the camera for the live cell imaging. And it uh, went last a lot faster. And then the exposure time and illumination intensity conditions also need to be optimized to be as fast as possible, but still give a uh, reasonable or working reconstruction. And then the, the stack size need to be uh, as small as possible. For, for the high speed optimization, I just went to the thinner regions of the cell, like far away from the, the nucleus, because my field of view was quite small anyway. So I, and then I just capture from the lowest to the uh, upper part of the image. And I also only imaged one channel, one color for the uh, high speed optimization. And then there are, of course, uh, trade-offs with the noise level and the uh, field of view, like you want to see uh, as much as possible of the cell, but um, yeah, and so on. So after the speed up optimization, I imaged uh, 10 times faster than I would usually do for fixed cells. And this is an example of uh, a time lapse then, uh, quite as fast as possible. I got, I got a volumetric imaging rate of 1.5 seconds. And you can quite nicely see uh, the dynamic of the vesicles and even these weird mitochondrial tubule coming out, stretching far and wide and retracting very rapidly. You can also see the here the set stacks may be a bit less than it should have been because the mitochondria goes like out and in of the field of view. It just goes too high or too low. But then if I use the a largest set stack, the imaging time would be I would image much slower and the photo bleaching would be also much faster so that the degradation of the image quality would course happen earlier. Uh, and these are maximum intensity set projections. And that's also what I will do the images I'm doing the quantification on later. Just another look at uh, the mitochondrial tubules. I think they were quite fascinating. I never seen anything like them. And I 
don't know if it would be possible with any other technique than this speed optimized 3D sim. And they are like floating around, <laughs> going there, doing their own life. I think it will be interesting future work and see, try to understand what these are about. They might be uh, very important in heart tissue where the mitochondria are stuck and mitochondria cannot uh, move around as, as much as in these cell cultures, but they might still be able to communicate with these uh, tubules going between cells. Okay, so we have a nice stably transfected cell line and we have optimized the imaging conditions. Let's see if we can quantify the results. So the main challenges here are that they have very small signal from the vesicles in between these much larger mitochondria. At the same time, we have some present of reconstruction artifacts from the algorithm that can look confusingly uh, like vesicles and have a, a similar signal. So the first thing we can do is to compare with uh, like a hard thresholding. So we, uh, we say we need to quantify anything in the image, we need to clearly define the object we want to, to quantify. So uh, the simplest method is just to have a hard thresholding method where the intensity is uh, above a certain threshold are counted as objects and below are counted as background. But we see that this is not perfect at all. We have pixels in the middle of mitochondria, which are sort of counted, are then seen as not as mitochondria. And we have a lot of mitochondria pixels that should should be white here. And this is particularly problematic because even though this was one continuous mitochondria, when we start quantifying things, all of these small dots might be counted as vesicles, even though there are absolutely no vesicles here, only one continuous mitochondria. So we can change the, the threshold a bit. So the different uh, semi-automatic methods called Otsus or Wang. And here we change the intense uh, the threshold a bit down, so so we we fill the mitochondria better here, but we also get a lot of noise or artifacts in in the background. It's not easy to see here, but it's just some reconstruction reconstruction artifacts which shows them up as vesicle like things. But then we are able to see from the the image context that this is mitochondria and this is background. And what is behind yeah. here is just reconstruction artifacts. Uh, at least with some training and from the image context, you can see that there is uh, some ringing here and some uh, honeycomb pattern. So then I thought maybe we can teach also the machine how to understand these image features from the context. So that, of course, brings us to machine learning based segmentation. So luckily for me, there was a plugin already called trainable VECA uh, segmentation. It's a type of supervised machine learning. Uh, I found it very intuitive to use. So this is an example of how the interface look like and how I, I trained my classifier. So it might be that I have put uh, a bit too much in this. Uh, <laughs> so there are two classes there, one dark red hair uh, background and, and green, which are the mitochondria I want to classify. And to make sure that all these artifacts uh, are indeed recognized as background, I put a lot of red pixels in this class to make sure there are all these artifacts here and, and between those regions are properly trained in that class. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how familiar you are with 
machine learning, but you, this is our, our training data then, which we have one class of background and we have mitochondria as the other class, and then we can train the classifier. And, and then it, it instantly showed the results and then we can remark what went wrong and, and train again. It's quite quick and nice to use. So if you just use create result, then it will take 50-50, but I rather use the probability map because then I could change the threshold according so that it, I thought it made sense compared to the, the images. Maybe it's easier to see here. So I did the training and then I get a classifier and apply it to the other images uh, and I get a, a probability map out. And then I did a, a thresholding of this probability map such that it, so that compared to the, the sim image, I saw that, okay, the, the size of the vesicles looked reasonable how I see the, the image. So I ended up using a threshold of 0.8 for this classifier for all images. And I just used the same classifier for fixed and, and live cells as well, and it seemed to work well. So um, this is the raw sim image or the reconstructed sim image, maximum intensity projected. And here, there are a lot of reconstruction artifacts in the background. If you're not used to SIM images, it might not be so easy to understand how I see this, but it, it with some training, you can see that it has a, its characteristic honeycomb pattern uh, and has some weird periodicity that's not uh, found in biological cells. Yeah, and then with uh, this binary mask, I just used the standard particle analysis uh, plugin in or feature in Fiji or ImageJ. And then I, I used size exclusion and also shape. So a circularity above uh, 0.7, I think I used and then try to find a reasonable size. So maybe the larges of these are a bit too large to be characterized as mitochondrial derived vesicles, but it's had to decide on something. I think it overall seemed to work really well. And of course, also a much, it's a much better segmentation than the, the heart thresholding. And what was shown there is just counting the different vesicles and the, the area. Okay, so then I applied this uh, classifier for two different growth, growth conditions, like heart cells grown in a media with glucose, that's the normal condition, and then a metabolic pressure perturbation in media not containing glucose at all, only galactose. And this is done to make the cells much or completely reliant on the mitochondria for energy. So when there are glucose, when there is glucose in the medium, then the, the cells can generate some energy also outside of mitochondria in the cytosol. But when in, in galactose, all the energy is produced via the mitochondria and they become more sensitive to stress. So we expected more vesicles in, under the galactose conditions because of this. And that was also what we found. It was a fairly small study, uh, but both for live and fixed conditions, we found a significantly higher number of vesicles. So for the live images, we have uh, fewer vesicles because we have smaller uh, imaging areas because we needed to go fast to have good images. So here the result was 60 versus 70 vesicles for galactose and glucose. And for the fixed condition, we had uh, 127 on average versus uh, 223 for the galactose condition.
yeah, to summarize, uh, mitochondrial derived vesicles are tiny vesicles and they are actors in mitochondrial quality control and cardiac biology. We use a stably transfected cardiomyoblast cell line with a double tag on the outer mitochondrial membrane. Talked about an uh, applied super resolution imaging and speed optimized 3D SIM. And I showed you how the vesicle can be quantified using uh, trainable VECA segmentation to also get rid of the artifacts in the images. So we found a higher number of vesicles for galactose than for glucose growth conditions. And for the future, we want to look more at the dynamics of these vesicles and also these cool mitochondrial tubules coming out and yeah, living their own life. <laughs> and we might do some multicolor analysis to look at the degradation of mitochondria and also these vesicles with this acid sensor I mentioned. And we also really want to visualize this in engineered heart tissue because our collaborators are actually growing their own heart tissue in the lab from cell culture and making them beat. And they also uh, transfect the cells such that they have fluorescent mitochondria. And they have beating fluorescent mitochondria now and we're very excited to see how what we can see there. It might not be possible with SIM, but maybe uh, light sheet microscopy, which is better for such large uh, samples. If you're interested in the data, uh, I put all this SIM data on Dataverse, uh, NO. It's also a, a data descriptor. Uh, well, it's actually a journal article, scientific data, which tries to make it easier for people to use this data. And this particular uh, quantification uh, is published in Journal of Biophotonics. So this is, um, yeah, these are the PIs in Group Leader, part of the Optical Nanoscopy Research Group in, in Tromsø, the Arctic University of Norway. And here we have a uh, close collaboration with the Clinical Cardiovascular Research Group. And the main idea for this uh, MDV research came from Osa Birgisdottir. So thanks to you all for uh, your attention. And, uh, if you have any questions, then happy to try to answer them. <laughs>